5 Incredible Women Entrepreneur Success Stories Hey everyone, welcome to our channel. Hope you really enjoy our last video. If you missed it, kindly check through our page to be updated. Today, we will be discussing with you 5 Incredible Women Entrepreneur Success Stories. Don't forget to like, follow and subscribe to this channel and remember to hit the bell icon so that you can have access to our unlimited videos and also be notified when we release a new video. Thanks. Even though there are more men in business than women, it does not mean that ladies have fewer chances to become a leader. Bright personalities like JK Rowling and Oprah Winfrey prove that success does not depend on gender. Thinking about life changes, women may wonder how exactly it can be done. The fascinating career paths of famous women may seem a rare exceptions. In fact, there are much more business ladies who achieved great results. If you want to do entrepreneurship right, here are 5 stories of successful business women you have probably never heard about. Nonetheless, they will inspire you for sure. Number 1. Madam C.J. Walker a daughter of slaves who became the first African-American female millionaire. What she's accomplished. Madam Walker developed a hair care product to heal scalp conditions that prevented African-American women's hair from growing. She grew her company to over 20,000 salespeople and always made sure to leverage her wealth to fight racism, which included getting involved in politics and providing scholarships to African-American students. How she got started. A daughter of African-American slaves, Madam Walker was a single mom who washed other people's clothes to provide for her daughter. In St. Louis, Missouri of 1887, there was no indoor plumbing, people really didn't bathe very often. This resulted in a severe scalp disease that led to Madam Walker's hair loss. According to the Smithsonian Channel, Madam Walker started mixing cleansing agents that she learned about while working. She found a solution that healed her scalp and even mixed in perfume for a better smell. Her hair started growing back and women started asking how she did it. So she used the bit of savings she had to bottle her lotion and sell it. She began to travel, mostly to the towns and cities where there was a church. She was going after African American women and because they were urban, they were beginning to care more about their clothing and about their presentation. She knew that this market was untapped. She offered her first customers, who bought the product for 10 cents, a free treatment. Before long, it wasn't just Madam Walker going door to door. She built a team and started scaling the company to over 20,000 employees. Number 2. Farah Mohammed, a social profit entrepreneur who got the top prime ministers and presidents of the world to take young women's advice about global economic policy. What she's accomplished. In 2009, Mohammed founded Girls 20 at the Clinton Global Initiative to cultivate a new generation of women leaders. The organization's flagship program, Girls 20 Summit, brings women ages 18 to 25 from each G20 nation plus a representative from the European and African unions, Afghanistan, Pakistan and the MENA region. The delegates meet before the leaders of the world's most powerful nations at the G20 Leaders Summit. At the end of each summit, one of the delegates presents the young women's recommendations for a gender-inclusive global economic policy to the G20 Sherpa team, who then presents it to a high-level member of that year's hosting government. In early 2017, Mohammed became the CEO of the Malala Fund, an organization dedicating to ensuring all girls across the world can gain at least 12 years of education. It was founded by another inspiring social entrepreneur, Nobel Peace Prize winner Pakistani Malala Yousafzai, who was shot by the Taliban when she was 15 years old for advocating for girls' education. After recovering, Yousafzai increased her activism efforts by founding the Malala Fund. How she got started. According to Hearts on Fire, instability in Uganda under Idi Amin forced her parents to move the family to Canada when she was just two years old. I was raised with a strong sense of giving back to the country that let us in. The website quoted Mohammed, pointing to the fact that she founded Girls 20 as a Canadian social profit organization. According to the National Speakers Bureau, Mohammed's upbringing instilled her with a strong work ethic and a keen sense of curiosity, which eventually culminated in her working in politics. For 10 years, Mohammed worked closely with some of Canada's most senior politicians. Post-politics, 
She served as Vice President, Public Affairs and Community Engagement for VON Canada, where she was successful in building government and private sector partnerships. A skill she later used to create partnerships for Girls20 with organizations like Google and Nike. According to her LinkedIn profile, she earned a BA and MA in political science and thus understood the economics that makes it impossible for a country to thrive leveraging only what men have to offer. Number 3. Wai Li Dai, a teen immigrant from China who became a self-made tech tycoon. What she's accomplished? According to Forbes, Dai is the only woman co-founder of an American semiconductor company. That company, Marva Technology Group, is now worth over $4 billion. How she got started? When Dai immigrated with her family from China to San Francisco, she was 17 and spoke almost no English. In an interview with Forbes, she credited her success to her education, specifically to teachers and professors and even basketball coaches who taught her anyone can accomplish anything. According to Forbes, Dai was on a semi-professional basketball team. Dai emphasized that sports help kids build their passion and confidence as well as their teamwork and communication skills. Collaboration, Dai later told the Financial Times, is critical to business so critical in fact that in the early days I even partnered with Intel, our competitor. You cooperate with the competition. I focused on the success of the industry overall, she said. The passion that she held for S Sports inspired her to work towards a greater goal that was bigger than herself and she never forgot how valuable education was. In those early days, she even encouraged her husband and co-founder Sehat Sutardia to go deeper into higher education before they started building their company. Number 4. Vicky Wessel, a pioneer in the highly male-dominant aerospace and defense industries. What she's accomplished. According to Entrepreneur, the Native American Wessel founded Spirit Electronics, an electronic components distributor serving the aerospace and defense industries. In 1979 and by 2010, boasted annual revenue of more than $32 million. In late 2017, it was announced that Spirit America, women and veteran-owned corporation, acquired Spirit Electronics. How she got started. In an interview with AZ Central, Wessel shared that breaking into the industry while in the 1970s wasn't easy. For two years, she was the only woman in a sea of men, including sales reps, marketing staff and engineers that ever attended a manufacturer's annual meeting. They didn't want me to participate in the social events that occurred in the evenings when they took all the guys out to dinner, she told AZ Central, sharing that we actually had one line that terminated our representation because I came to a sales meeting. They didn't want a female there. But Wessel was assertive and kept showing up and thankfully had a boss who believed in inequality and insisted that his clients talk to Wessel even when they insisted to talk to the boss himself. Number 5. Nelly Galan From child immigrant to TV network president to a multi-stream entrepreneur that empowers Latin American women. What she's accomplished. A nationwide Fortune 500 corporate speaker and real estate investor, Galan was the first Latina president of a US television network. That television network was Telemundo, which Wikipedia describes as an NBC television network and the second largest provider of Spanish language content in the US. Galan founded the Adelante movement, which provides tools, training and events for Latina women who want to start their own businesses. Reports Time adding that Galan runs events across the country. How she got started. Galan emigrated with her family from Cuba to the US when she was only 5 years old and grew up idolizing female Hollywood executives instead of Hollywood stars. When she was only 22 years old, she managed a TV station in New Jersey. Yet, unfortunately, the station got sold. After putting in so much work, she felt crushed but decided to take charge of her own destiny. Fast Company reports that she started her own production company and consulted for networks. But like many new entrepreneurs, she didn't make enough money and ended up getting a job. Except the job she accepted was running the TV network Telemundo. Thanks for watching!